Hey folks and welcome back to another one. With ice fishing season coming to an end and with open water season right around the corner, I figured I would bring you all a video on my favorite lures for spring walleye. Walleye are a warm water species of fish similar to bass and pike. They aren't as active in the winter as they are in the summer, spring, and fall due to the water temperatures. When water temperatures begin to rise and hit around 60 Fahrenheit and higher, walleye really kick it into gear and start feeding actively and start behaving more aggressive. The reason for this is because when the water temperature hits that point, their metabolism is gonna be working more efficiently. They're gonna have more energy to be able to go out and chase baits to build up their energy that they lost during the winter so they can build up and save that energy for the up and coming spawn. So when the pre-spawn rolls around, walleye begin feeding extremely heavily on bait fish. Like I said, they're trying to rebuild their energy for the spawn. At that time of year, bait fish are gonna be the only consistent source of feed for walleye because the fly and bug larva hatches haven't occurred yet. So they're gonna be primarily feeding on bait fish. That's why when targeting walleye in the pre-spawn and during the spawn, focusing your attention towards matching the patterns of the bait fish in your area that the walleye are feeding on is extremely crucial. It is 100% gonna increase the odds of you catching a walleye if you're matching the patterns of the bait fish in your location. Walleye spawn around rocky reefs, gravel bottoms, and they primarily spawn within rivers, creeks, and locations with current. You can often catch pre-spawn walleyes pushing up into shallow shorelines, along big flats, within bays, on bay points, and around islands. Now they're most commonly caught in these areas because during the pre-spawn, they're focusing on feeding on bait fish, and these are some prime locations where the bait fish are gonna be at all year round, so they're 100% gonna be chasing the bait fish in those areas, and it'll be usually along the way to a prime spawning location. Bays are commonly located right outside the mouth of a river or a creek, so focusing your attention in the bays around creeks and river mouths is very, very key. Vegetation breaks, sand mud to rock transitions, Lots of rock formation and drop-offs are key locations for targeting walleye in these areas. You could fish around an entire island, but if there's only one location with structure around that island, the walleye are all gonna be stacked up on that structure, and your odds of catching one will be that much more improved. During the spring, walleye can push up really, really shallow to focus on their feeding or to spawn. Walleye usually begin their spawn when the temperatures of the water hit around five to 10 Celsius or 41 to 50 Fahrenheit for all my American friends out there. All right, folks, so that's all for some of the information on walleye fishing in the spring and during spawn. So now let's get right into my top five lures to catch walleye during the spring. Number one on the list, we have deep divers. So first on the list, we have some deep divers. I have two right here. These are my two favorite deep divers to use for walleye fishing. And the reason I'm showing you all these two in particular is because they have very different profiles in comparison to each other, different actions, but they both do the same thing in terms of their purpose. They both get down deep, reaching down into those deeper waters, bouncing on bottom, really aggressive uh, profiles and presentations for these really hungry spring walleye. So one of them being the Cotton Cordell Wally Diver. So it's got a shorter profile, it's not that long, it's got a very big wide body, and it's got a very slow kicking presentation, it's not very rapid. It has those rattles inside which attract the fish a lot better as well, but it's not a very fast presentation. So it's definitely a good representation for a wounded bait fish or uh, a slow swimming bait fish, which I'm sure a walleye will never pass up. And the second deep diver, we have the Berkeley Flicker Minnow. So unlike the Wally Diver, this lure is complete opposite of the Wally Diver. It's very thin profile, it's very long, it's got a very rapid kicking motion. Left and right kicking motion, extremely rapid, especially when you're trolling in a little bit of a current or in a, if you're trolling at a little bit of a higher speed, this kicks like crazy. It really mimics a fleeing bait fish or a really lively bait fish. Not to mention, it's got some beautiful patterns. It's got that nice shine on it. It really attracts some fish in. Again, the Flicker Minnow does have rattles inside of it. They're both great options. If you really had to pick one, I wouldn't say there's one to pick. They both serve their own purpose. The Flicker Minnow, you know, you're probably gonna get a bigger, uh, bigger walleye on it. It's a big profile bait. But then you can go over to the Wally Diver. You're gonna get more of those eater-sized ones, you know, under 20, 20 inches, let's say. 
Uh, you can get a lot of prime spawners on this one too, though. It's like a perfect size bait. Again, flicker minnow for big ones, Wally Diver for numbers. So both should be in your tackle box. They're both great lures to try out. Highly recommend going out and getting some deep divers if you're going to target some spring walleye. Second on the list, we have blade baits. In recent years, it really seems to me like blade baits have really snuck their way into walleye fishing a lot more frequently. I know a lot of big YouTubers and a lot of big time walleye anglers have really transitioned towards a blade bait for targeting spring walleye. And I just completely understand why. For me personally, blade baits have been probably my favorite lure to use for all species, whether it be walleye, bass, lake trout, whitefish, all sorts of species. So this blade bait I have here is just an example of a wide variety that you can have to choose from. There's so many different styles of blade baits, so many different colors, so many different sizes. There isn't really one to pick from out of them all. Obviously matching the presentation of the minnows in your location, whether it be uh, for me, we have lots of smelt in Cisco and Shiner, so I like to match it with a silver profile. But if you're going to be fishing somewhere down south where it's a lot of, you know, uh, darter minnows, dace, stuff like that, you might want to change your presentation to something with a little bit of red, a little bit of brown. Uh, if you want to do a crayfish pattern, a nice red crayfish pattern, there's a lot of different varieties to choose from. Definitely, I would say, though, a blade bait is going to go out there and catch you tons of fish no matter what. It's a great bait to just fan cast from your boat. You can just jig it, rip jig it right beneath your boat. You can cast from shore with it. You can do anything with a blade bait. It's just a great versatile lure to have in your tackle box and I highly recommend going out and trying some. Blade baits have a very great vibration to them and after you're done ripping it up and letting it settle back down to the bottom, it really simulates a wounded bait fish. So a walleye hundred percent come there, pick it up and have a little snack, which isn't actually a snack because it's a lure. If I had to say one last thing about the blade bait is that you'll 100% catch lots and lots of walleye on it, but you might not be getting all the big ones. I still believe personally that a flicker minnow will 100% catch you a bigger walleye than this one will. This will 100% get you the numbers, and I'm not saying that you won't get a big walleye on it because you really never know if you put it in their, in their face, they're pretty much gonna eat what comes by them. But I just find a flicker minnow is just a bigger presentation. It's going to attract those bigger fish. It's going to wean out those smaller ones and you'll 100% get bigger ones on the flicker minnow. But I think that the blade bait is 100% going to be your best bet for numbers. And you, like I said, you can 100% catch a big walleye on a blade bait. Number three on the list, we have jigs or jig heads. So an obvious staple in walleye fishing is the jig head. Now I will say, Again, like with the blade baits, there's an extreme variety to choose from when it comes to jig heads. There's hair jigs, there's different styles of ball jigs, the lead heads are always going to be made different, you can get metallics, you can get just painted ones, different color hooks, you can get ones with flashers, you can get ones with um, a head that's built for live bait, one that's built for soft plastics. There's so much variety when it comes to jigs in walleye fishing. Now, most commonly, people are just going to pair up a jig with a live minnow, a dead minnow, a worm, or a leech. Now, while that's really, really effective no matter what time of the year you're fishing, I will always say, trying to match up what you're using for your bait with your jig heads. I find if I'm using a live bait, I like to pair it up with a gold metallic like this. If I'm fishing with a leech, I like to match it with a black. If I'm fishing with a worm, I like to add it with a brown or a pink. And if I'm fishing with a soft plastic, because I like to use either a white or a chartreuse soft plastic, a chartreuse or a white jig head is usually the best. For me, I don't really know if it really makes that much of a difference, but I find that matching your presentations up makes it a more um, acceptable approach for the fish. They like it a lot better. I've always found more success when I'm matching my jigs with my baits. Now, over the past couple of years, people have really been transitioning from live bait to soft plastics, and that's completely understandable. Soft plastics are great baits. You'll 100% catch a lot of walleye. Some really good soft plastics to use are paddle tail baits, twister tail baits, or finesse baits. Now, always remember to have some hair jigs because if you run out of bait or you didn't bring any bait, a hair jig can substitute 
for a live bait or a soft plastic. Always have a hair jig on you. I don't really have too many. I used to have some brown ones and some chartreuse ones. I have this orange one here. So you can always use some hair jigs because it'll be a very good substitute for other jigs. And jigs are just so versatile. You can use them anywhere. Vertical jigging. You can cast them from shore. You can cast them from a boat. You can fan cast. You can troll with them. You can do anything with jigs. They're so versatile. You're going to have to have these in your tackle box at all times because on the slowest days, you might only get a walleye or two on a jig and you wouldn't get them on anything else. So always having jigs is very important. And I'm sure everybody knows that jig heads have been a staple. So you all know that you can catch walleye from the smallest sizes all the way up to the largest on a jig. So definitely go out and pick up some jigs if you haven't already. I'm assuming everybody here has, but it's just a good thing to get out there because everybody needs jigs. Number four on the list, we have the Rapala Husky Jerk. Now I know with my previous three lures, I've kind of generalized the style of lures. And you might be wondering, why am I focusing on one particular type of lure right now? Well, the Husky Jerk is a very unique type of lure. There are a lot of lures out there that you can use for middle water column suspension when you're trolling behind a boat. I find for some reason the Husky Jerk is just the all-round perfect bait. When it comes to the body size, the girth of it, the length of it, everything is perfect. You can get it in multiple sizes. It's got a perfect kicking action, not too fast, not too slow. It doesn't really make any errors when you're trying to cast it down. Some of them don't have a big enough lip to get it to dive down properly. And sometimes they'll actually sit on their side when you're trolling with them, which you obviously don't want. So I find that the Husky Jerk is the all around perfect bait for middle water suspension when you're trolling behind a boat. Like I was saying before, deep divers are a great option for targeting spring walleye mainly because it's really matching bait fish. And when the walleye are really in that bait fish feeding mood, you're really gonna wanna try some deep divers and some husky jerks because you never know, they might be suspended in the water. Utilizing a depth finder is gonna help you locate these walleye and see what depths they're focusing at. So having a husky jerk is gonna get you down to those suspended walleye better than anything else will. So I definitely recommend going out and getting some, not to mention, they also have a ton of variety of patterns for them. So if you want to match a certain bait fish in your area, you go to the website and they'll 100% have the color you're looking for. Like I said before with the blade baits, a lot of the minnows around here are extremely silver and blue here for me. So I like to focus on silver and blue patterns. So definitely go out and buy some Husky Jerks. I highly recommend having them. They'll 100% catch you some suspended walleye. Number five and last on the list, we have Jigging Wraps. Jigging Wraps are another great lure out there for targeting walleye. For me, in my opinion, they're the most perfect search bait out there because you can get them to cast out far, cast down below you, you can vertically jig with them, but they kind of swing around and they have a very different action compared to anything else that a walleye loves. You can cast it out far and when you're jigging it back towards you, it'll be like kind of swimming around on its own. There's different methods to targeting walleye with these. You can just do a gentle jig. You can do snap jigging, which a lot of people like to do. Uh, vertical jigging is the best option pretty much with these, but you can, you can fan cast them. Um, they're great baits all around. I 100% recommend having some of these because no matter what, a walleye is going to absolutely crush. A jigging wrap, uh, brand doesn't necessarily matter. Seems like, you know, Rapala jigging wraps have always been the best. Um, but you can get some other ones out there. There's always going to be different kinds, different brands. But I definitely like the Rapala ones. Now again, like with all my other baits, matching the hatch and matching the size profile of the bait fish that the walleye are eating is key. I have a nice big Rapala jigging wrap right here with a crayfish pattern. And I will say that the crayfish patterns are extremely good for fishing uh, during the spawn because usually when the walleye are spawning, the crayfish are spawning as well. So walleye absolutely love eating crayfish during their spawning runs. And yeah, I think you should all go out there and buy some jigging wraps. All right, folks, that's all for today's video on my favorite lures to catch spring walleye. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to please leave a like down below. Hit that subscribe button to keep up with all my uploads. And please leave a comment if you have any questions down in the comment section. So again, I hope you all enjoyed. Thanks for watching and take care.